Beginning with the differential form of the generalized balance equation, we can now derive the conservation of momentum, or what's called the Cauchy momentum equation. Momentum, you'll remember, is mass times velocity. So momentum per mass, or psi hat in this case, is simply the velocity. We can then substitute velocity in for psi hat. Furthermore, the rate of generation of momentum should be zero because momentum is a conserved quantity. So phi in this equation will go to zero. If we start from the integral balance and substitute velocity in for psi hat, we have an integral form of the balance equation that looks like this, which can now be simplified. By application of the divergence theorem, we can convert the advective flux surface integral to a volume integral and bring that over to the left-hand side of the equation. Expanding both of these derivatives using the product rule allows us to regroup some terms that we can identify from the continuity equation, or the conservation of mass equation. The sum of d rho dt plus the divergence of rho v is zero from the continuity equation. The quantity on the left-hand side of this equation can now be identified as the material derivative or the substantial derivative of the momentum. The substantial derivative is defined in equation B58 in appendix B of the notes. The substantial derivative is the derivative of a quantity following a particular mass of material. Since this is the rate of change of the momentum on a defined set of mass of material, or a material control volume, this by definition must be equal to the force acting on the material in that control volume. So we find that the surface integral of the diffusive flux of momentum on an Eulerian control volume is simply the force acting on a material control volume. So now we can ask the question, what are the forces acting on the material in the control volume? If the material in the control volume is a fluid, we might define body forces and surface forces. Body forces are those forces which act on all of the material contained within the control volume and include things like gravity. Surface forces are forces that only act on the surface of the control volume and are therefore integrated over the surface. Surface forces are things like pressure and shear stress. Of course, we can convert this surface integral of surface forces to a volume integral, again, by application of the divergence theorem. And now we can replace the diffusive flux of momentum with the sum of these forces, where GA is the acceleration of component A due to body forces. And this summation sums over all of the components in the system. This is necessary because some body forces do not have the same effect on all types of matter. Body forces include gravity and also things like the forces induced by electric fields and magnetic fields. These can accelerate different components differently. Electric fields accelerate positively and negatively charged components in different directions, and the magnitude of the acceleration depends on the charge on the component, for example. So these should be summed up for all of the components of the system. Del P is the gradient of the pressure, and del dot tau is the divergence of the shear stress. If this equation holds over any Eulerian control volume, then we can make the control volumes smaller and smaller, and ultimately drop the volume integrals and show that at any point within the control volume, the arguments of these integrals must also be equal to each other. That gives us the differential form of the Cauchy momentum equation. Another way to write the Cauchy momentum equation is to combine the pressure and the shear stress terms to give the divergence of the total stress tensor, sigma. The equations at the bottom of slide 35 summarize the integral form and two equivalent differential forms of the Cauchy momentum equation, or the conservation of momentum. In the next video, we'll derive the component balance equation for molecular species.